These mixing tips I'm gonna show you are guaranteed to make your beat sound better. You should be doing this with every kick and edit way to really make people say, wow. Sound selection is everything. What's poppin' gang? Today we're gonna be showing you how some industry producers are mixing their beats. If you want any of the drums that I use in this tutorial, a link will be in the description. You can download some of these sounds that I use for free to follow along with the video. And I also noticed you guys like drum kits, so go ahead and just take the ones I personally use all the time. So some of the topics we're gonna cover in this video is how to EQ your sounds, how to get the right levels, how to mix your drums and melodies, and what should you put on your master. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here's a beat I have pulled up right here. So I mixed this beat, but one tip that you wanna do when you're mixing your beats and um, figuring out like, you know, how to level level everything listen to it in mono because sometimes that you know some certain sounds sound good in stereo but in mono you know when they're listening to it on their phone which most likely is going to be in mono certain sounds jump out way too much and you might need to edit it or turn it down turn this knob right here on the master track all the way to the right and then you can listen to your beats in mono so i'm going to go ahead and play the beat real quick just so you can hear how the beat sounds and we're going to jump into how i mixed it Okay, sound selection is everything. Every sound should feel like it fits perfectly next to another sound. So you can see here, I just got a harp, I got a, a guitar, and I got a choir. That's mainly it for this whole entire beat. And a quick way how you can add all your sounds to the mixer channel to get ready to EQ and mix and stuff like that, you can double click right here and then all these sounds will be selected and you can go on to the mixer channel and then right click hit this button right here and hit starting from this track and then all your sounds will be perfectly aligned exactly on the mixer track so jumping into the guitar here's some of the sounds that i use these are more of just like arranging the beats and making sure that you know the sound changes it here and there or whatever jumping into the eq here's the eq right here one of the main eqs that you want to do as far as like mixing your melodies and stuff like that you want to make sure you take out some of the mud but let's listen to this guitar by itself. So notice how when the guitar went low and then when it when it went high, they both matched, they both perfectly mixed. It sounded perfectly mixed and everything. So let's jump into what I did. You always wanna do this right here. You always wanna EQ some of the low end out. A lot of times what I do with a majority of my melodies, especially if it's like a real instrument, like a piano or a guitar, you wanna take out some mud too as well. Cause you know, that can get some interference with the 808 and stuff like that. So you don't want that. So you probably wanna take out around, you know, 150 to 300 Hertz and I take around around 250 and I felt like right there was a little bit muddy for the, the guitar. So right there it just sounded very muddy and I didn't like that at all. And you know, you wanna take that out, notch that out. Around like 400 to like, maybe like 800 or 700 Hertz. You know, that's kind of getting into making the sound a little bit more boxy or giving it more body. So that's what I did here. I added around 650 Hertz and just to give it a little bit more body cause I took a lot of the mud out. So, you know, I don't want it to be a super flat guitar. Next, you really want your vocals to breathe on top of the beat. So, you know, a lot of what I do is I take out a lot around a thousand Hertz. That's mainly where the vocals are going to sit and I want the vocals perfectly on top so make sure you take out around a thousand hertz on your melodies and I wanted to give this guitar a lot of a, a little bit more high end you know what I'm saying I wanted to make sure I complement the high ends on the guitar I boosted around 4,000 hertz and it sounded pretty good also what I did is I took out a lot of the high end as well because like I said uh, if you watch some of my videos I always say that um, make sure you take out some of the high ends on melodies because that makes sure that the vocals sit on top okay so next I have the arp right here and and you can see on this EQ, I took a lot of the low end out on the on the heart because it's a heart, man. You know, you don't need a lot of bass in your harps. Um, let's listen to it real quick. So as you can see, like even though the harp got pretty low, you know, I still had a good enough volume where I can add it in the beat and it didn't sound like it was like 
you know a telephone effect or something like that i added i took out just enough where it wasn't muddy and i had enough sound where the harp sounded full you don't want to eq your melodies to the point where it's a whole new sound unless that's what you want you might want a telephone effect on your melodies you know what i'm saying that's perfectly up to you next like i said before around 400 to 800 hertz you know you want to add a little bit of boxiness to it um just that make it a little bit more full and less light i took out around 1500 hertz you know 10 some of the lighting too as well with lighter sounds they can get very annoying as well so I, I wanted to make sure everything was pretty level and took out some of the high end as well so next we have the choirs right here and what I like to do with sounds that sound like you know like a lot or whatever you know I like to spread them out and this is what I like to do normally when you get this plug in it starts off like this and just hit this like two times or three to where you get like this effect like that and basically the delay the left side or the right side just just enough to where it sounds very wide or, or spread out and I love that effect. It's super easy and it's from FL Studios Free. And here goes some of the EQ effects that I did on there. You know, again, took out some of the low end, took out some of the uh, around 1000 Hertz. I boosted around 2K and I also took out some of the high end as well. You know, just because like I said, I wanted to blend in with the background. Now with all the melodies, you know, you want to make sure you have them level at the right, you know, leveling. You know, you don't want your melodies way too loud and then your drums aren't hitting as hard because of your melodies. You're thinking in your head, oh, you know, it sounds level, but you know, you still want more of the 808 well turn your melodies down basically and personally i like to have all my melodies on a aux track to where i can literally just turn them all down by itself and all my melodies are coming out of this aux and as you can see you can see exactly where they're hitting So basically, you know, you want your melodies straight in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Nothing too high, nothing too crazy, because that's where the drums are going to be. They're, you want your drums to hit hard, right? So make sure your melodies are in a perfect level, probably around negative six to negative nine dB. That gives you a lot of headroom for your drums and stuff like that to really hit hard. Let's go ahead and move on to the drums. I want my 808s to hit hard. And at the end of the day, you know, you have your kick at the top, your 808, your snare, and then your hi-hat, and then the rest of your melodies all at the bottom. If you want a really good mix and trap sound, so so to do this, you got to really be paying attention to your levels. So I'm going to play the drums real quick and then you can just keep an eye on where the drums are leveled at. As you can see, the kick, like I said, on top, the loudest sound in my beat. Next is the 808. And then after that, you know, snares, claps or whatever. And then uh, you have your hi-hat. Okay, so on the kick, um, you can add like a little EQ uh, just, just to make sure that it doesn't interfere. What I do is I click and hold on this little, this little thing right here and I drag it to where it's like four little squares. And then you can make a really sharp EQ curve. And uh, you could probably leave it around, just take out around 31 and 32 Hertz. Same thing with the high end. You could take some of the high end out even if there is some. Me personally, I, I don't do anything to the kicks at all. It sounds perfect to me, you know what I'm saying? It's like coloring, you know? Do you wanna use a Sharpie or do you wanna trace the circles? You know what I mean? It's, it's all up to you, man. I don't care to uh, really EQ my kick like that. And same thing with the 808, unless I really want like a, a certain type of effect. Like for an example, like uh, if I really want distortion or anything like that, I can use this and then right click and go to overdrive, turn it down a little bit. Perfect, I got a little, distortion effect on there but me personally i didn't want this on this particular beat the, the melody sounded soft so i wanted the 808 to just blend in but if you really want a hard sounding 808 you know me personally i go with layering your 808 adding more 808s to it so here's what i did on my 808 to make it make sure that it sounds good make sure it's hitting hard uh, i just literally layered like three different 808s the main 808 here another 808 this one it's like a secret weapon 808 and this is tracked on a whole new different channel with this last 808 the secret weapon little 808 thing sometimes like i'll turn it down first all the way to the end no effect on it you know sometimes i'll put the distortion effect on this on this plugin turn it up to the point where it is distorting and turn it down to where it's like just clean you know that that just makes the 808 just a little bit more solid a little bit more punchy just a little bit more you know pronounced and on the snare and the, and the claps and stuff i got them tracked on the same channel and you could you know just like i said make sure you take the low end out on those same thing with the hi-hats and even on the hi-hats here you know i just turned up a little bit on the high end even on on 
the master channel you know i turned up on on the high end and on the low end as well same thing with here boosted around here added a little bit of high end and yeah you know sometimes you can't add a compressor in there as well but personally i don't like to add compressors on my master channel on the beat only because you get into compressing your your beats you know you're, you're taking some of the frequencies out why make it sound less good i don't know it's just to me it's just no point in doing that especially when at the end of the day they're going to have another person mix the whole entire beat over you know when you sell the track outs or whatever and then on top of that they're going to add effects to the master channel anyway you know you add in a compressor to your master channel and then they're going to add a compressor on the master channel or just basically turn it down now your, your beat is over compressed at that point why even bother and then when you add a compressor you know like a multi-brand compressor or something if the kick is loud and the 808 is loud and it's turning it down it's like then your 808s getting a little bit lower because you know your kick is on top you know is you're making your 808 a little bit lower when you do that so me personally I, like i said i don't do any compression any soft clippers anything on my master channel uh it's really a personal preference you know i never really had good luck with the soft clipper but a lot of people talk about it they all added to the master channel but let me know what you guys do in the comments do you add soft clipper on your master channel please let me know i don't like me personally i just don't but hopefully this video was able to help you if you want any of the drum kits that were mentioned in this video a link will be in the description where you can download this for free like i said you guys said you like drum kits so uh, go ahead and download these for free I also have a mini kit uh, or a mini pack where you can download the demo version for free there's a link in the description if you're interested yeah hopefully this video was able to help you hopefully you stay safe and remember it's only a matter of time